Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for episode 15. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was definitely very good in my opinion. I really enjoyed it, I rewatched it, and... It was a pretty easy watch, if I'm going to be honest. It was an interesting story where Barry basically at the start of the episode wakes up, realizes that Iris is missing, and then the whole episode centers around that. And there is only one small offshoot in the episode, well, actually two, but very small offshoots. So Chester at one point realizes, oh, someone is using his tech, and he kind of digs into like a little investigation, but it's literally just like two or three scenes in the entire episode, so it's very minimal. And then the other scene is literally two scenes with Caitlin and Mark as they try and debate whether to bring Frost back, and obviously Caitlin is very much so for it. Mark is initially against it, but by the end of the episode, he comes around to it. We're gonna be talking about those specific storylines later. But I have to say, I do like how this episode was like pretty much primarily focused on Barry and Nora's storyline, obviously including Iris and Dion, but we'll get into that throughout this video. Okay, so basically at the start of the episode, Barry wakes up, he's in a happy mood, he's like, oh, do you want blueberry pancakes for breakfast or should I run to Brooklyn, obviously like a long way away and get you those bagels and then he realizes oh iris is not here doesn't really suspect much because he sees a text from iris but then he goes to iris's office with the bagels and she is nowhere to be found her text messages haven't been answered her phone is in the office but she is nowhere to be seen so he realizes that something is off and so he shows up at star labs and reveals that iris is missing and chester turns on satellites star lab satellites don't even pick her up anywhere on Earth and Cecile can't detect her even. So basically she's not on this plane of existence, she's lost in time. And Barry at that point realizes, because obviously her time sickness is linked to the Steel Force, that she is lost somewhere within the Steel Force and Barry must find a way to crack into the Steel Force. Obviously this is a big conundrum because Dion has gone missing since the last time that they saw him. So Barry's thinking, oh how can we tap into it? So that's what the storyline kicks off with at the start of this episode but yeah so let's go over to Caitlin's storyline so Caitlin wants to bring Frost back by doing an exhumation I think she said that was the name I have no idea what it is but the thing that came across to me was it's like pet cemetery where you take someone's DNA and you basically revive them you bring them back from the dead and always in these type of storylines in these kind of zombie storylines where you're resurrecting people they come back, but they're never the same. We've had that in the Arrowverse before with Sarah Lance and Oliver. Basically, if you die and go into the Lazarus pit, you come back as yourself, but not yourself. You are not full. You are basically controlled by this lust for violence. Or in this case, if Caitlyn brings back Frost, maybe she's going to be turned in, you know, a completely different way. Okay, so Mark is mad because, you know, he hasn't accepted this. And basically, he's like accusing Caitlyn of using mad science to try and make Frost alive once again but like I mentioned towards the end of the episode he does come around he has some time to think throughout the episode when we don't see him on screen but back with Barry we have him going over to Tinya because he has the idea that Tinya was one of the reasons that Iris disappeared for the first time so he thinks maybe he can use her powers in some way but she does not want to work with Barry or anyone related to Iris due to Iris basically making her mum disappear and she's been pretty much MIA since then. We do actually catch up with Tinya's mum in this episode and she is in fact in the Steel Force but she's stuck just like everyone else. And so Barry detects and taps into the Steel Force actually after being rejected by Tinya as Dion shows up and everything slows down inside that bar when Tinya is gone. And so Dion shows up, he's like, oh I'm back, blah blah blah. He says a couple of things and basically they go into the Steel Force in order to try and track Iris down and basically figure out what's going on. But actually, he doesn't go in at this point, that being Barry, because Dion does disappear and then Barry goes back to Star Labs and he talks to Team Flash or, you know, what's left of Team Flash about what he's going to be doing. 
and the fact that everyone thinks that maybe all the forces have been affected that's why none of them have showed up and that's why Dion keeps on disappearing and so Barry convinces Team Flash that he must go into the Steel Force and so it's at that point where Barry goes back to Dion's doorway basically the entrance to that other plane of existence and that's in you know Memorial Park I think they call it but Barry is attacked by the Steel Force as everything kind of goes into flux you see like the lightning come down that's what I mean by attacked and basically Dion reveals to Barry at this point that past present and future all exist simultaneously and that's why you're seeing all of these different people kind of phasing in and out of existence seeing them old young and present and so at this point Barry finds like multiple newspapers and in the final newspaper he finds an article about Zoom and Godspeed and obviously this is because past, future and present all exist at once and so that makes them basically happening at the same time so that's why everything is kind of in flux and Barry is very confused by all of this and so Barry's sensor actually picks up Iris's signature they move towards the building where she is at CC Citizen Media and also pairing all of this we have lots of crazy camera moves basically just to emphasize the disorientation of the steel force and we have these green flares going off everywhere so yeah it very much so looks like a different plane of existence and so then we go back to Star Labs where Chester finds a bomb has quantum coiling that bomb was given to him by the CCPD and they think it's a bomb However, that is not the case as later in the episode he figures out that it's one of his viewers who previously asked about the device and basically he was trying to create renewable energy and just at this point because Chester actually thinks it's a, a weapon of destruction. Chester thinks he is a villain and that he's created something bad by doing all of his live streams. And so let's move on from here. We go back to Barry and it seems like Dion betrayed Barry. Now, we're not entirely sure because Dion doesn't really show up again later in this episode. However, he took that kind of like tracker that he put in Iris and obviously Iris is still missing and she doesn't come back in this episode. And so Dion absorbs it and then he basically snaps the kind of tracking device out of Barry's hand away from existence and he disappeared too and his look kind of says it all so I wonder what actually is going on with Dion is he being controlled what is his true motives why is he being like this and so Barry runs after him and gets stuck into his childhood home and that's at the point where we see 2049 so we cut to here as Barry is stuck and Nora is there in 2049 here Bart in the background who's burping doesn't show up because I don't think Jordan Fisher was available for this episode but he will return later in the season it's great to see Nora again I love the fact that they keep on getting Jessica Parker Kennedy back so much and so she's writing an article on her superheroing and basically it's revealed later in the episode that she doesn't in the future follow the path of her dad but instead follows the path of her mum by becoming a reporter and Barry's very proud even though she's a bit scared to tell him and you know technically she shouldn't tell him but he's very proud when she does and so Dion visits Nora and reveals Barry is missing and Nora disappears as Dion disappears as well obviously you don't see Dion so you just see this kind of like green glowing energy with inside her apartment in 2049 and Nora doesn't really have a choice she's like oh shrap and she disappears and basically Barry hears Nora and then Nora eventually shows up after the ad break and so it's at this point where Barry and Nora reunite it's great to see them back together and then they have that scene where she reveals she's a reporter and she didn't follow in her dad's footsteps and then Barry goes on to meditate Nora points out this is probably inspired by Uncle Wally which is true Barry confirms it and Barry was taught this by Wally in the past and so it's just a technique to basically tap into himself and tap into his surroundings and so Nora suits up and gives Barry Iris's brush as an anchor because she still has it in the future as well as the present so it's something that she always has had and so maybe it's going to help her but instead of finding Iris Barry finds Joe and Joe can see Barry and Nora in his living room and they can see Joe and they're all kind of green and the kind of future projections of themselves I don't know what to call it like astral projections and so basically it's revealed that the present is stabilizing and things are becoming less kind of hectic and crazy 
and that is just what they're able to examine from doing this. And Barry's eyes flash green, and this is probably the most interesting part of the whole episode in terms of revelations. He can see the past, present, and future, and Barry goes on to list a list of names that he can see. So he saw Jesse and Harry. So that means Jesse Quick from Earth 2 and Harry, who obviously we thought was dead when he combined with the original Wells and all the other Wellses. So that's great to see. He can also see Cisco and Frost. Obviously, Frost is dead now. Cisco is alive elsewhere in America, but obviously it's been a while since we've seen Cisco, so that was a nice reference. And all of these references are very nice. Then Barry also talks about Bart's children. We don't know who his children are going to be. Don't know if we're going to ever see them on the show. But that would be cool, maybe like Tornado Twins properly. And then we get the reveal that Nora has a wife in the future, which was kind of nice and a little bit of a surprise. I didn't really expect them to go into so much detail. When they said, like, Jesse, Harry, Cisco, Frost, I was like, okay. And then they said Bart's children, and then they said Nora's wife. I was like, oh, wow, they're really getting into this. And then randomly at the end, Barry says, and Max. Now, what does he mean by Max? By this, I was a little bit confused, and I'm sure many of you were confused, because I was trying to think of the Maxes that we know, because Max isn't a character or a main character in the show that we currently, you know, have as a series regular or even someone that randomly pops up. However, it seems like they are actually teasing a surprising speedster who may come in the future, and so when he refers to Max, it could very well be Max Mercury. And now, I'm going to say that is what their reference was, because in the comics, Max Mercury is a speedster with a pretty unique role and a big deal inside the Flash family. He's always there to help, and we haven't actually seen him in the Arrowverse yet, so that would actually become a big thing, especially because in some versions of reality in the comics, Max Mercury is a mentor of Bart's, just like in the Arrowverse, Bart's mentor is Jay Garrick, and so maybe that remark will actually come to fruition, as this is a big tease. Don't take it lightly, it definitely could happen. However, they've teased stuff in the past and it's never happened, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt, I guess, but I definitely think they're talking about Max Mercury here. All right, let's move on. So Barry and Nora have a little bit of a revelation and then they figure out, oh, how can we escape? So they go to Memorial Park, which is the gateway to the other plane of existence, obviously, like we talked about earlier. And so they try to escape, but they are flung into the air like miles back into the city and they're stopped. And it's a temporal barrier. And at first they think they're stuck in like a temporal loop. But that's not the case because they have to think about escaping to escape. So basically, they've already gone through, but the Steel Force is keeping them there because you have to remember the place is the past, the present, and the future. You just have to think, and basically the mind is the most powerful thing with inside this plane of existence. And so they get through, and they realize, oh, we're going to have to find Iris another way. And at first, they're confused why Dion would trap them in the past. We're still confused about that. We'll obviously get answers about that. In the next couple of episodes but Barry has the feeling that Iris is okay right now and that they will eventually find her so that is a big mission for them in the next couple of episodes and we'll see where that actually leads and the revelations that we have in regards to Dion and who the main villain is of this next graphic novel and so the final two things that happen in this episode is that Chester finds out that his wiring was not a bomb but instead a way to create renewable energy that was a very nice way to cap off his kind of storyline in this episode, which I said was very small, and it is actually very small, until the very end where you see someone hacking into Chester's files and actually using them probably for malicious intent. So, who is that? Is it Cisco? Is it someone bad? We'll have to wait and see, but presumably it's someone bad, and it could be to do with our next big bad. That's what I would presume because they're going to start teasing their next big bad pretty damn soon. So the final scene of the episode is Caitlin, who's confronted by Mark, who breaks into her apartment. Don't know why he broke in. Why didn't he knock? He just wanted to be dramatic. And so basically he changed his mind and now wants to bring back Frost all of a sudden. It's a sharp turn, but I knew that it would happen at some point because 
he basically is very very attached to Frost and they didn't know each other for an awful long time so that is something that he is clearly not ready to kind of give up on yet. So that is about it for this episode guys, thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video, if you did enjoy it please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new so you don't miss any future videos, and you can also click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video, but for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later, goodbye.